Welcome back, Verse. Man, it has been too long since I've done another video. I mean, I have. As you guys know, I have done my recent short film, which I'm very proud of, really happy, and very grateful to the people involved, and I'm really happy that I was able to get it done. You know, it was something that I was really kind of getting ready to work on for quite some time, and yeah, I've been getting a lot of great feedback from it, great criticism from it also. Really a lot to work on, and you know, the people involved were really awesome. You know, if you haven't checked out the bloopers, please check it out. Obviously, it was a lot of fun, and also happy veterans day because the day that i'm doing this it is monday so it is veterans day uh so shout out to all the veterans and troops out there and all and all those before that have served for our country thank you guys so much and then obviously wow the election damn <laughs> and just so you know no i'm not gonna get into that but i'm just saying whoo that that came and went thank god oh but with that said now we're gonna be getting in to boxing and with boxing that's right literally one week from today, actually four days from now, we're gonna be getting the fight we've been waiting for, which is gonna be Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Now, a lot of people are taking this fight seriously, a lot of people aren't. Some people clearly want Mike to win, some people think Jake are gonna win, right? We've seen some training footages that have come out right now, there's already some training sessions between Jake and Mike Tyson, you know. Mike Tyson still got it, by the way. Jake, obviously he's in his prime, so we all know where he's at right now. And right now, they finally released the very first face-off between the two of them. And luckily, it's only 15 minutes. There's also the fight with Taylor and Serrano. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited for that fight also, but obviously I'm more invested in Jake versus Mike. So with that said though, first, I'm gonna react to the face-off, give you guys my, my reaction and my thoughts. So with that said though, first, let's get to it. We're just days away from the biggest boxing event in recent memory. Yep. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. This isn't pay-per-view. It's Netflix. Yeah, that's and crazy. This is MVP. Netflix is doing this. Face to face. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to meet you, bro. A lot of change. Maintain order. <laughs> We're gonna allow you guys 45 seconds to answer my question. What? The opponent has 45 seconds to respond. It's like a presidential debate. Yeah, tell me about it, all right? <laughs> all right. I'm here, it's important. Hopefully it's not 2v1 like. I want to be real with you. I don't want to pause too much because I do want to hear what they both got to say. I don't like the time limit, especially because 45 seconds, that's it? How much can you really say in just 45 measly seconds? You know, at least in our presidential debate, they had like two minutes, you know, 45 seconds for boxers? It's like, what? It's so short. I don't know. Uh, let, let's see how it goes, but I just felt like it takes away from the intensity of them getting ready to say what they got to say. I get why they're doing it because sometimes boxers get too personal and then they end up talking over one another and it drags on too long and then, the, you know, the, the moderator is trying to control it. I get it, but 45 seconds is just it's just so short. But anyway, no, 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 this oh, is a dream come true for me. I am inspired by Mike, his story, you know, what he's persevered through. And to be able to fight him and to share the ring with such a legend is a special moment for me. And it's historic. And the fact that we did it with Netflix, it's the biggest fight of the century. And that's what I love to do. Make history, have fun, and go to war. You know, that's true, because if you were to try to watch this pay-per-view on De Anza or Showtime, right? Man, like, their prices are just beyond outrageous. I hate De Anza. I love De Anza, but I hate De Anza because if you want De Anza, you have to pay a monthly subscription, which is $20, which I'm like, okay. But then, despite paying that subscription, you still have to pay for the pay-per-view that's coming, which is an additional 60 to 70 maybe $80, right? They're going up on everything. And I'm just like, what? Like, so... If I still have to pay for the pay-per-view, why am I paying for the subscription? <laughs> it's just, it's so stupid. I hate the way how the answer does that. Now, like, the app just went to shit. And then Showtime, well, Showtime's always been expensive, so it's just, it's just a matter of which one you want. At least on Netflix, you just gotta have Netflix. I'm really happy about that. So, you know, something like this, they could have really, like, milked it and straight up charged you, like, a fat-ass amount of, like, $120. But, no, they didn't do that, and I'm really happy about that. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Oh. What does it mean for boxing? Everything, man. You know, this all came from an ayahuasca ceremony. 
when I saw this happening, I saw the butterfly effect of every kid going into the gym the next day wanting to be like me or Mike. 700 million people watching on Netflix wow. and the impact this will have on the sport is unfathomable and it's untangible, quite frankly. Okay, Mike, so what does it mean to be fighting Jake Paul? And same question to you, what does this mean for boxing? To be honest, boxing has never seen nothing like this in the history of boxing. Since it began, since it began 250 years ago, it's never seen anything like this and probably never will. Well, Mike, let me ask you this. What do you say about Mike Tyson if he knocks out a 27-year-old Jake Paul? Mike just knocked somebody else to go out again, you know? This is really <laughs> big. It's just, um, it's not like it's just some 27-year-old as Jake Paul. Yeah, he's a, he's a pro now, question, right? What does it mean if you knock out a 58-year-old Mike Tyson? Uh, yeah, when yeah. it happens, it's going to be a little bittersweet because I, I have love for him, but at the current moment, we're meant to w go to war. Uh, he's trying to take the food off my plate. I'm trying to take the food off of his plate, and that's what warriors do. But for me, I've dreamt this, manifested it, and but it'll he's be not the in his prime, of, though. So you know, that's where it's kind of twelve year here and there for me, and entertainment and acting and working and all the things I've done now into boxing. This is finally my moment and my time to shine. And I'm gonna show the world who the fuck I am because everyone's out of me. Everyone's had something to say. Nothing was ever given to me. I've had to work for it all. Suppressed by everyone, kicked off of YouTube, kicked off of platforms, canceled five times, and here I am. Throwing the biggest event in really all of entertainment actually. And now it shows to the rest of the world what hard work and perseverance can, can do. And I'm just happy to be able to show that to other kids who maybe have to go through adversity and have to fight and have to keep on proving themselves time and time again. So from your answer, what I got is, you said when it does happen. Yeah. So you're gonna knock Mike out. It's already written. Okay. Mike has a straight face the whole shit? time. <laughs> Clearly. He's making sure, I like that confidence <laughs> right there. This is the baddest man on the planet, heavyweight. Look, I mean, just look at the fucking guy sitting here right now. Right. He's an animal. He posts Instagram pictures and I get a little scared because uh -huh. of how good he looks. <laughs> but I have to step up to this level and show people that I can accomplish the impossible. And that's what the story of Jake Paul is all about. Now, Mike, a lot of people going to point to your fight with Kevin McBride yeah. and say that uh, that's when your skills basically dissipated 20 years ago. My life has changed since then, and I decided to fight um, Roy Jones, and I that was successful, and now they're fighting. So people shouldn't even bring that shit up no more. No, they should bring it up. Okay. They should see the difference from before, um, from there to now. Got yeah, it. I agree with that. Would you me, at, me at my worst, to me at the biggest event in the history of events right now. There's, that, there's never been any bigger than this. So what? That's true. You know. Um, you should never really disregard your history when it comes down to a sport of any kind because as each year goes on, that's depending on the sport that you're in, right? You improve depending on the amount of time and practice you put into it, right? So with boxing, yeah, there's going to be times where you're going to have your wins and sometimes where you have your loses. And when you do something more successful later on in life, right, and you compare it to something back then, that just goes to show how much you stepped forward. So don't ever disregard your past because it's helped you get to where you are now. That's like a no-brainer. <laughs> and honestly, I'll be honest, I'm surprised with the 45 second mark here. I, I do feel like it should be longer because I just it's just so stupid. But I mean, regardless though, I mean, I like the fact that uh, they're giving their answers like that, so it works. The one thing I will say is that I don't, uh, you know, for Mike to take to knock out someone like Jake, it really wouldn't be bad on his end because you know jake isn't some like he's not me right where i like i'm not i'm not really a pro or it's like some random guy here making a video or whatever right like jake's a professional boxer he's fought pros i mean questionable here and there but he's fought them right and if jake was to knock out mike i mean sure that's a win but in the exact same time he's 58 years old right like he's not in his prime so it's really iffy like you're just like eh, yeah it was cool but I mean, the dude's almost 60, so... <laughs> I mean, did you really knock out the greatest of all time? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, maybe if, if Mike was maybe, like, 10 years younger, maybe people would drop, maybe. But even then, that's a stretch. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not really at the same length. Let's say about that. 
What you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's what critics do. They sit on their couches, they sit in their homes, and they have so many things to say because they're unhappy with their lives themselves. <sighs> They'll try to rip people apart like me and Mike who are actually going and fucking doing something. He had 11 pro fights. One amateur fight. How do you rate him? Hey, Real quickly, I, not to pause too much. I agree. I absolutely agree with that. Look, I criticize too, but I only criticize something if I know about it, if I'm doing it, right? Boxing, I will get into soon. I love the sport way more than I did when I before I got into wrestling, right? I love wrestling and boxing. So, of course, because I know a lot of it, that's why I critique because I'm either involved in it or I just know a lot about it, right? Uh, when it comes down to acting, right? I react to movies, right? I criticize or critique movies because that's what I'm doing. I'm an actor, you know? I do movies. I just release my own short film, you know? But, hey, you know, like, I criticize things that I know of. But Jake has a point. When there are people that don't know anything about the sport, that don't know anything what they're even criticizing, you can tell they're just kind of meh and they're talking a lot of smack when they don't really have a lot to back it up about also. Yeah, it's true. You know, people just hate to hate sometimes and that's stupid. I hate it when people say the dumbest things and don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> Trust me, when you talk a lot of smack, and talk about nonsense that you don't even know exactly what you're talking about. It really makes you look bad. So, Jake has a point here. I absolutely agree with him. I'm here reacting, giving my critiques, and I, I agree with him. So, yeah, he has a point there. Um, he's been successful in all those pro fights except one. And um, that's why we're fighting. It's been four years. That was where it came Professional out. boxing. And in terms of what I've done in those four years, and the amount I've learned is more than any pro boxer. So just in terms of how much I've learned and grown, I'm the fastest growing and learning boxer in the sport. And that's what I rate myself off of. If you calculate how good I got from year one to year four, no one else has made that progress. So really to me, that's the most important thing to focus on. And I have big plans and I'm continuing to, again, do the impossible and show people what I'm capable of. And they chalk up what I've done to fights being rigged. Still when he posts on his Instagram looking like a killer, hitting the shit out of the mitts, the top five comments are, if Jake wins this fight, it's completely rigged. And that used to bother me. Right. That used to bother me because I was like, no, I'm working so hard, can't you fucking people see? But now I take it as a compliment because the human peon brain of the 99% can't even comprehend can't even get it. how good I've gotten and what I'm accomplishing in this world. They telling me you're talking too long. I'm, there's not no Trump shit. They trying to give me the... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I see, knew see, this was going to happen. See, don't... Hey, we got all the time <laughs> in the world. We can make edits. Who, what's your name? Joe. Shut the fuck up, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Control. <laughs> he told the producer to shut the fuck up. Joe, <laughs> the me. Right, I'm telling you, the timer's stupid. Like, nobody wants that. People cannot deny your activity. This is your third fight this year. You had three fights last year, six fights in the last two years. Well, boxers are fighting once every two or three years. Does that make you better as a boxer, the activity? Yeah, 100%, and I, I have to stay active. I have to stay working towards my goal of becoming a world champion. So there needs to be three fights a year for me at least, and that's, that's how I get better is under the bright lights and performing when there's adrenaline and nerves. Gotcha. I've always been in the gym training. I'm a boxing professional fighters. I'm just, um, activity is great. I had 15 fights in one year when I was younger. And I think activity is great, but I'm, I'm prepared. I'm just ready to go. Now, does a loss to Jake Paul damage your legacy? I don't look at my life as a legacy. Legacy to me means ego. Who the fuck cares about my legacy? I'm going to be dead soon, but, but he's they, not going to win. What do you say about your legacy? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a pretty Mike smart Tyson, answer. I like that. Not just beating Mike Tyson, knocking Mike Tyson out. Obviously, it would be the biggest moment in all of boxing history on Friday night when I put this man to sleep. So that is that is pretty dope. He dreams a lot. <laughs> a lot of dreams. <laughs> this is not going to come true, young man. Hey, man. I, I respect your opinion, but it's just my time. The universe know it, the, the gods know it, I know it, and you're gonna know it. Plain okay. and simple. Okay, for next week, we'll see. We will. A few things. One, there's only one guy. Two, even if he does win, hypothetically, if Jake does beat Mike Tyson, the way how he looks like right now, 
he ain't gonna leave looking like that. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Jake is gonna be leaving bloodied. He's gonna have black eyes left and right. He's gonna have marks all over his face. I'm telling you, even if he manages to beat Mike Tyson, he's gonna be messed up. And again, he's not fighting an MMA fighter, by the way. He's fighting a pro boxer. That's why even though there's a lot of criticism here, it's also entertaining because there's actually two pro boxers going at it. I love that. I honestly feel more like Mike would win but I mean if Jake manages to do so I would be very surprised and I mean if he does hey credit to him I will give him credit if he actually beats Mike like if he actually fought him and went to him and you know came out all bloody and actually beat him cool but again it's not going to be a full victory so that's where I'm at but anyway that's the beauty of boxing is the truth comes out and by golly do I love the truth are you concerned if Mike hits you flush on the chin, this shit could be fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. I agree. I have to be alert. This is this is a scary, scary man. He's a killer. And has all the power still clearly in all the videos, all the sparring that he's showing, dropping his sparring partners. Uh, my mom is messaging. She can't even watch Tyson punch. She won't watch it because it scares her. And I get that. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's your kid going out there fighting that. I get it. I have to be ready and know that he's going to have some moments in there, and I'm going to have to persevere. Now, Mike, <laughs> go to a manufacturer killer. How you respond to that? I would say uh, the deadliest weapon in the world is manufactured. That's a nuke. I like that. I like that. I like that. You got some smart analogies going on in this one. To be a peaceful man waving Disney Channel wands around, and then to choose to kill. Now, Mike, look, you criticize Jake's skills. What does that say about you if you lose? Well, I'm not going to lose. So I can't even fathom lose. I can't imagine it. He's not going to win. I think he thinks this is going to be a very easy night. It's not going to be an easy night. At all. I don't think that. I think it's going to be a war, a war of ages. The fans are the ones who win out of this, but I know you, I know your soul on a deeper level, and I know myself, and I know you're not gonna fucking quit, and neither am I. You could rip my head off, I can go down to the canvas, you can fuck me up, I could be bleeding from everywhere, and I'm not gonna stop, and I know that's the same for you. That's the beauty of this, is I don't think it's gonna be easy. I know it's gonna be hard. You had a great career, but in many ways, this is the biggest event that you've ever been a part of, what does this say about this night and this matchup? First of all, no one else can do this but me, okay. I believe. And um, like you said, this is the greatest boxing match in the history of boxing. And it's because I'm a part of it. Yeah, he's he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT, man. And I don't really know any other boxers at his age that have done matches Texas, like that, so he has opponents. I'm trying to think of some. I, I do think a dance requires two people, but that's the magic in this, is that were you know this yin and yang that is creating this massive fucking disruption and storm and massive fight so you know 2024 november 15th the gods and the universe aligned us to do something magical and it and it takes the both of us but he's had a longer illustrious career and i i believe by the end of my career i will reign as the goat of this sport now, a lot of people are saying that the Taylor Serrano fight should be the main event. Part one was a fucking... That's going to be a good fight. I want to see what that fight. To say to Taylor versus Serrano. It, it is, is going to be a good fight. Like, Those are know, like, hardcore it, women. Is, <laughs> there's two main events. How do you choose which one to, to put right. before each other? You know, they're, they're massive. I'm, I'm more excited to watch that than I am excited to take his punches. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, man, I mean... It's yeah. it's massive, and I'm just so excited to see the rematch and for Amanda Serrano to prove all of her doubters wrong. So who do you think won? Close. It was close. Close. Way the close. But when your opinion... Serrano lost close. the last one. Taylor won, so it's a rematch. <laughs> I think Serrano might win. Might. And when Amanda Serrano wins, Katie Taylor, I think we do the trilogy at Croke Park. I'll get Donald Trump to come in. He loves doing big fights since 
Eddie Hearn hasn't been able to get anything done over there. He's too busy trying to be in Katie Taylor's corner for the fight. Yeah, Trump used to go to WrestleMania all the time, like when it first started. He was in, a, he was in quite a few of them. Fucking insane, but Katie will make now boxing happen in Croke Park, and it's going to be, you know, something they could settle the score. I, I believe men is going to win. It'll be one and one. Then they can do the third and settle it all. So you're already doing the trilogy before we get the sequel. Yep. Okay, say no more. <laughs> I'm like Star Wars, baby. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, the difference Why is you got a plan. Why does Mike Tyson win this fight? <laughs> because I'm Mike Tyson. Why does Jake Paul <laughs> win this fight? Because I'm Jake Paul. No. <laughs> Man, uh, this is just, it's my time. That You know, the gods have showed this to me. I'm, I'm going to be faster, stronger, and more elusive. He's not gonna know where I'm coming from, and I'm, great imagination. I'm truly, <laughs> great imagination. I'm truly gonna show the world that uh, I outboxed Mike Tyson, and that's fucking wild to say. Oh yes, yeah, so I got you a gift. Thank you. Oh, I dude. I got you a gift, Mike. What a pigeon? This is a pigeon from Southeast Asia. Very expensive, uh, but I wanted you to have this. Thank you, Jay. How do you feel about that? Huh? You, you yeah, about dude, that? it looks like a low, low budget low pedigree. Budget. <laughs> you pay thousands of dollars it's for that. It's an expensive pigeon. I seen a video of, and I'm not sure if you have seen it, Mike. Did you see his Instagram today? About what? Maybe it's good that you didn't see it yet. <laughs> um, he has you guys face to face, and he's kissing you in the mouth in several yeah. pictures on Instagram, but it's actually on his page, and uh, it's kind of went viral today, of him just it? stepping in you, kissing you in the mouth several times. Does stuff like that aggravate you? I have that effect on people. Uh, yeah, I have that effect on people. Okay. I just oh know. my gosh, it's true, I was looking at it right now. <laughs> what the heck, that's so weird. Yeah, I do. Freaking AI, man. Is it a low budget pigeon? Or it, they have no, he had no one, no one loves him. He has no band or anything, so he doesn't belong to nobody. Okay. Well, he belongs to you now. Jeez. I'm feeding to my falcon. Oh. Uh, so that's food yeah. for your falcon? Yeah. Ah. Uh. This is getting interesting. What do you have to say about this fight coming up this Friday? And many words for Jake. I'm just ready. It's ready. Let's go. Jake? Let's go. The do si -do. You ready yeah, to go? Excited, man. And uh, it's it's going to be a beautiful night. Amazing fights on the undercard. Amazing production. The amount of people showing up for this. The biggest stadium. The biggest platform. The biggest fighters. Doesn't get much better than this. Mm. This is going to be an amazing spectacle this Friday on Netflix. And there's limited seats available on Seeking. Good luck, gentlemen. Uh, are you really gonna feed him to your falcon? Yeah, but I can't take him with me. There's no way I can take him. That's fucked up, Mike. Well, <laughs> feed the nigga to your falcon. I, I would never do that. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you. Good job, man. Now, thank you for that support. Thank you. 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 Well, pleasure to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. You can come with me, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, that was a pretty good one, Verse. I really did enjoy the face off. It was calm, cool, collective. People had smart things to say. No one was really speaking over each other. Like I said, the time limit thing was so stupid. I mean, 45 seconds. Come on. What? <laughs> I knew that, that was going to be an issue at some point. Sure enough, it happened. He did, did, Jake actually told the producer to shut the fuck up. <laughs> that shit was funny. Uh, now, in all seriousness, right? I like what I've, I'm seeing so far, you know, if you haven't seen the Netflix documentary, like I said, like, you know, their monologues and them going um, through their backstory and obviously the training footages, you know, they do that with every boxing fight, right? Always trying to get the documentary of the, of the build up, right? And even now, MVP, I saw on YouTube that they released more training footage uh, and a more documentary style of Mike and Jake. So I'm going to be watching that after this, not reacting to it, just watching it on my own time. But I definitely will say I like the responses that both Mike 
and Jake have this, uh, are saying. I like how Mike is just like, this is nothing new for me. It, it shows, obviously. He has like a straight face the whole time, you know? <laughs> and all criticism aside, you know, I think this is just going to be a good fight in general. I know people are just making bets and guessing like how long the fight could last, like how many rounds. And this is just me. I haven't checked how many rounds. It could just be eight rounds, but I don't know why I get the feeling the match could go no more than maybe four to five. And if anything interesting happens, the seventh round. Every time when there's a boxing fight, right, it's always in the in the fourth to the sixth or seventh round that something happens. It's always around those rounds, right? So that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why I get the feeling that Jake's going to have a hard time here. And then even after this fight happens, right, one match that I want to see so badly is Jake versus KSI already. Let's just have that fight. I mean, come on. Like, you guys have fought your fair share. You guys clearly built up. You know how the workout is going to be. KSI on his end has said that the main issue why they haven't boxed yet was because there's this issue with the weight. I'm like, guys, you're going to have to come together at one point and figure out what to do because it's like, just build this fight. And if they're not doing it, I personally feel like KSI just doesn't want to risk losing because if he loses, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much criticism. It's going to be so much. I'm making fun of because if you couldn't handle his song, imagine <laughs> the thick of it song, right? Then imagine him taking an L from Jake Paul. So I'm telling you, verse, like that, that fight is going to have to happen at some point. I mean, you can't hype it up and then not do it at all. That's the most stupidest thing you could do in boxing. You both are at your prime. Just get it done already. But here, though... I will definitely say I get the joke with the pigeon. If you haven't watched the documentary on Netflix, right? Mike Tyson reveals that he has this thing where like it's like a hobby and it's therapeutic for him where he has like this whole cage of pigeons and he likes to feed them and you know like take care of them. So Jake basically got him this bird and Mike's like, eh, I don't want it. <laughs> so uh, I get what he did there. But I mean, other than that though, first, let me know what you think about this face to face. Let me know who you think is going to win. You think Mike is going to win. You think Jake is going to win. Let me know. Let me know how many rounds. I'm telling you, it's going to be one hell of a fight. So with that said though, first, if you like what you saw, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification for more content as always. Look forward to the next video, verse. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Later, verse.